The Mormon church used to be very clear who the Lamanites were. When I was about 17 years old, I saw another vision. All at once, the room was illuminated above the brightness of the sun. An angel appeared before me. He said, the Indians were the literal descendants of Abraham. Early LDS missionaries were also confident they knew who the Lamanites were. And now, behold, I say unto you that you shall go unto the Lamanites and preach my gospel unto them. And insomuch as they receive thy teachings, thou shalt cause my church to be established among them. A Mission to the Lamanites, September 1830. Jesus wanted more people to hear about the gospel. He wanted some of the saints to go on missions. He called Oliver Cowdery to go on a mission to the American Indians. These Indians were also called Lamanites. Other men wanted to go with Oliver Cowdery to preach the gospel to the Lamanites. The Lord said three of the men could go. First, the missionaries went to some tribes in New York. The missionaries gave the people the Book of Mormon, but only a few of them could read. Then the missionaries went to preach to some Lamanites in Ohio. These people were happy to hear about the Book of Mormon and learn about their ancestors. The missionaries left Ohio and went to a town named Independence in Jackson County, Missouri. There were many Lamanites in Missouri. The missionaries preached the gospel to them and gave them the Book of Mormon. Such confidence was the rule through most of Mormon history. My family and I are presently living in South America among the Lamanites, the children of Lehi, the people of the Book of Mormon, a people of great promise. President Kimball had a great concern for the Native Americans throughout his life. When he received his patriarchal blessing at the age of eight, he was told, you will preach the gospel to many people, but more especially to the Lamanites. Of his beloved Lamanite brothers and sisters, President Kimball taught, assuming that we do our duty to them, the Indians and other sons of Lehi will yet rise in power and strength. The Lord will remember his covenant to them. They will come to a knowledge of their fathers and to a perfect knowledge of their Redeemer, Jesus Christ. They shall prosper in the land and will, with our help, build up a holy city, even the new Jerusalem, unto their God. The Indian is a Lamanite. There are, there are South American, Central American, Mexican, Polynesian, and other Lamanites running into millions who are not specifically called Indians, though they are related Lamanites. The Lamanites are a mixture of many. Undoubtedly, there is the in their veins, the blood of Nephi, Joseph, and Jacob, as well as that of Laman, Lemuel, and Sam, also of the Mulekites of Judah. They are not Orientals. They are from the Near East. The Twelve Apostles, who were associated with the Prophet Joseph, proclaimed this to the world, quoting, He, the Lord, has revealed the origin and the records of the Aboriginal tribes of America, and their future destiny, and we know it. We also bear testimony that the Indians, so-called, of North and South America, are a remnant of the tribes of Israel. Through the centuries, movements, discovery, exploration, settlement, and colonization of the people of this land, it is not impossible that there could have seeped across the Bering Strait a little Oriental blood as claimed by some people and possibly a little Norse blood may have crossed the North Atlantic. But basically, these Lamanites, including the Indians, are the descendants of Lehi who left Jerusalem 600 years BC. Wilfred Woodruff, president of the Lord's Church, identified many of the larger tribes as Lamanites. President Joseph Smith and John Taylor called them Lamanites as have all the presidents and leaders of the church since. All of these claims about the Lamanites changed in 2003 when DNA evidence became public that undermined the assertions of the LDS prophets. In 2007, the introduction of the Book of Mormon was changed. Instead of the Lamanites being the principal ancestors of the American Indians, now they are simply among them. As the evidence has continued to mount, 
the LDS Church publicly addressed the issue in 2014 in an essay entitled Book of Mormon and DNA Studies. It states, The evidence assembled to date suggests that the majority of Native Americans carry largely Asian DNA. The Book of Mormon itself, however, does not claim that the peoples it describes were either the predominant or the exclusive inhabitants of the lands they occupied. What seems clear is that the DNA of Book of Mormon peoples likely represented only a fraction of all DNA in ancient America. Finding and clearly identifying their DNA today may be asking more of the science of population genetics than it is capable of providing. So here we see the contradiction between the modern LDS church and most of its history. The Lamanites, that a generation ago supposedly covered all of North and South America and the Pacific Islands, are now impossible to locate. Not only are these sons of Lehi no longer identifiable as a people, but the ruins of the Nephites have disappeared as well. In 1842, Joseph Smith wrote as the editor of the Times and Seasons, let us turn our subject, however, to the Book of Mormon, where these wonderful ruins of Palinque are among the mighty works of the Nephites, and the mystery is solved. Mr. Stevens' great developments of antiquities are made bare to the eyes of all the people by reading the history of the Nephites in the Book of Mormon. They lived about the narrow neck of land which now embraces Central America with all the cities that can be found. Read the destruction of cities at the crucifixion of Christ, pages 459 to 460. Who could have dreamed that 12 years could have developed such incontrovertible testimony to the Book of Mormon? Surely the Lord worketh, and none can hinder. When the first reports of the ruins of Palenque were heard in America, Joseph Smith was certain that they were the ruins of the Nephites. As archaeology has undermined these claims, the LDS Church no longer makes them, just as they no longer claim to be able to identify the Lamanites. The history of the Mormon Church is one of constant contradictions. What a thing it is for a man to be accused of committing adultery and having seven wives when I can only find one. I am the same man and as innocent as I was 14 years ago, and I can prove them all perjurers. The exact number of women to whom Joseph Smith was sealed in his lifetime is unknown because the evidence is fragmentary. Careful estimates put the number between 30 and 40. There are statements in our literature by the early brethren, which we have interpreted to mean that the Negroes would not receive the priesthood in mortality. I have said the same things, and people write me letters and say, you said such and such, and how is it now that we do such and such? And all I can say to that is, that it is time disbelieving people repented and got in line and believed in a living modern prophet. Forget everything that I have said or what President Brigham Young or President George Q. Cannon or whomsoever has said in days past that is contrary to the present revelation. We have spoke with a limited understanding and without the light and knowledge that now has come into the world. We get our truth and our light line upon line and precept upon precept. We have now added a new flood of intelligence and light on this particular subject, and it erases all the darkness and all the views and all the thoughts of the past. They don't matter anymore. It doesn't make a particle of difference what anybody ever said about the Negro matter before the first day of June of this year. We invite you to watch our free video, An Earnest Plea to Latter-day Saints, in which we examine the Mormon Church from both history and the Bible. We demonstrate that Mormonism preaches a different God and a different gospel from the Bible. Please watch. None of us should have anything to fear from truth. Jesus said that in spite of all the lies in the world, there is truth, and the truth will make us free.